Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of ISTQB training test automation engineer certification. In our last session, we briefly covered all the horizontal layers and the interfaces of GTA, which is generic test automation architecture. In today's session, we will cover the first layer in more detail, which is the test generation layer. So a test generation layer, uh, as you can see on the screen that uh, we have an extract of the GTAA diagram, which we went through in the last session. So I have extracted the test generation layer part, which shows that it consists of manual design and test models. So test generation layer um, in a GTAA supports both manual and automated design of test cases or test suites. So first of all, let's go through uh, the tool support which test generation layer consists of. So it provides the tool support for manually designing test cases. So test cases, when we write manually, we can use any test management tool for that. Like uh, we can use a tool like Zephyr or um, TestRail, X-Ray. There are many other test management tools as well. So test generation layer, it provides the tool support for manually writing those test cases. The second point is developing, capturing or deriving test data. So test data is um, a very important part uh, when of test generation when we are writing test cases, when we have different scenarios which we want to execute, it's very important that we have the right test data in order to execute those test cases. So we can develop or create data for our testing for a new project or for a new functionality of an existing project or sometimes we can just derive or obtain data from any other data source like for example a production environment or any other environment and use that for testing as our test data. Then the next point is automatically generating test cases from models that define the system under test and or its environment that is automated model based testing. So let's first understand that what is model based testing. So model based testing provides a technique for automatic uh, automatic generation of test cases using models. So we always uh, whenever we have a system uh, which we need to test, we have some uh, requirements around that and we come up with a specification model which states the behavior of the system. So using that specification model, we can also come up with a test model. We can derive a test model from that. And uh, there are many model-based testing tools available as well, which can be used to interpret the behavior uh, to develop test cases. Okay, so we just mentioned that we can derive a test model from a specification model. So now the question is that why we need to come up with a test model if we already have a specification model. So as a tester, we have a very different view of the system as compared to the other teams, like let's say developers or business analysts, etc. So we see the application very differently because our main focus is on the robustness of um, the system which we are testing like for example uh, we will think of all the edge cases all the negative scenarios and uh, the test model um, which we are talking about will support all the classic test design techniques such as um, boundary value analysis decision table testing equivalence partitioning uh, use case testing, state transition testing, etc. Because the basic idea is to improve the quality of the test design. So I hope that this part is quite clear. Moving on to this next section, which is uh, the components of the test generation layer. These components are used to edit and navigate test suite structures. Okay, so test suites are nothing else but folders. So in simple terms, we can uh, we can take test suites as folders and uh, we have test suites in both manual 
and automated test, is, um, test cases because it can help us in both kind of testing. So whenever we have um, test cases which are related to a specific module or a specific functionality, it's always handy if we, um, if we create a test suite or a test folder for that. Because uh, let's say that we have uh, a module, a uh, login module, and we have different test cases for login module. Uh, then next time, whenever we have to run the test cases only for login module, all we can do is just execute that test suite for login and uh, then we don't need to worry about the other test cases and we don't have to manually uh, go through all the test cases and find that which one we need to execute for uh, for login functionality we can just um, execute the ones for that specific test suite so test suite are test suites are very useful the next one is relate test cases to test objectives or system under test requirements so whenever we are writing some test cases uh, we have to uh, link it back to the requirements of the system which we are testing which is known as the traceability to the requirements so we need to have a traceability matrix um, so that we can do test mapping to and from the requirements in both ends uh, like for example if we have uh, if we are using uh, Jira as our project management tool and we have a user story in that and uh, in our test case, either in our manual test case um, or in our automated test case, we can use the same user story number to map it to that requirement. And whenever there is any change in that user story, we can make the same change in our test case as well, because then we will know that exactly where we have to make the change. And nowadays there are many tools available, which um, if we are doing our manual test cases, then they will link to the project management tool and the same test cases, the manual test cases, we can also link then further to our automated framework, automation framework as well. The next one is document the test design. Okay, so uh, documenting the test design is basically describing the testing process. So it describes a list of inputs for given application that will provide a set of expected outputs. So documenting the test design, of course, it's a part of um, writing the test cases that we do write all these steps that what is um, uh, like what will be the inputs and uh, and what we are expecting as an output the third section is for automated test generation the following capabilities may also be included now over here it's important to pay attention to this part where it's written may also be included which means that it's not necessary it might be included because sometimes these little things which we miss and if there is any question in the um, in the exam then we uh, opt for the wrong option so please pay attention on all the little details mentioned so the first one is ability to model the sut its environment and or the test system so this is uh, the same thing as we talked earlier about um, the model based testing over here but over there we were talking more from the tool support pers uh, perspective and uh, over here we are saying the ability to model the SUT so models can be used to represent the desired behavior of the system under test or to represent uh, testing strategies and uh, a test environment etc the second point is ability to define test directives and to configure parameterize test generation algorithms okay so let's first discuss the first half of this statement which is ability to define test directives so i'm sure that most of you are already aware of that what are directives and maybe have tested directives as well but for just for the knowledge of the ones who are not aware of directives so um, 
just like to cover this a little bit in a little bit more detail and this detail is not part of the syllabus but uh, um, I think that it will be useful uh, for your understanding so directives uh, modify DOM what is DOM document object model so it extends the additional behavior to the uh, DOM element or object and there are different types of um, directives for example uh, let's take attribute directive which is one of the uh, directives attribute directives changes the style or behavior of an element now let's say that the element we are talking about is a button and whenever we do the, uh, the mouse over uh, whenever we hover over that button it changes the color from red to green so this is a directive this is an attribute directive because it's changing the behavior of that element let's take another example so if we take an example of um, an angular js application so directives in angular js encapsulates all of the custom DOM manipulation which happens in an angular app so often this is the source of many bugs and that is why it is very important to have automated tests for directives so the first part is covered and now the second one configure parameterize test generation algorithms okay so we can write different algorithms which helps um, to generate the tests and uh, nowadays um, there are many ways uh, many ways to generate test cases automatically as well and um, automated generation of test cases can greatly reduce software testing cost and also improve the efficiency of testing as well so this talks about the ability to configure those test generation algorithms or adding parameters to those test generation algorithms and the third part over here is ability to trace the generated test back to the model elements okay so in the second point we talked about the generated uh, tests and now we are saying that ability to trace those generated tests back to the model elements or objects so whatever the elements or objects we have those test cases which are generated should be able to trace back just like we do the mapping to the requirements so now we are talking about tracing them back to the model like elements etc so i hope that the test generation layer is um, is quite clear and uh, this is all uh, which we will be covering in today's session so in next session we will be uh, going through the next layer which is the test definition layer uh, till then thank you so much and take care bye